one question I get a lot is, can we waive child support? Now, there's two times that I see this successfully happen that I'm going to get into in this video. But in order to explain that, I have to explain why the judges are usually against this most of the time. And you have to be really careful when you're looking out for these two conditions I'm going to get to in a minute. So the reason that most judges are going to be um, having a problem with the parents waiving child support is because that this, the statute in most states says that the child support is the right of the child to receive and is not the property of the parents to negotiate away. Um, and so because child support is calculated based on um, how much time, it calculated heavily based on how much time the kid spends with each parent, you have parents who in the child custody negotiation phase of the custody case, you know, they want to say, hey, look, um, I'll cut you this deal on child support if you give me the majority of the time with the kids. And so um, the judges want to avoid that. The judges want to avoid uh, situations where custody arrangements are negotiated based on, you know, a promise that you won't have to financially support your child or, or something like that. OK, so for that reason, and that kind of transitions into the first situation where um, we see child parents being able to waive child support is is when the judge will let it happen and so that is to say that there's a lot of like like more country more rural type um you know jurisdictions where maybe the the courthouse is lower volume you know maybe it, it, again it's in like it's more country rural type areas um, where the judges are a little more old fashioned, you know, they've got like these good old boy kind of, you know, courts, which as scary as those are, those are the courts where, you know, the judges will usually let parents get away with, you know, waiving child support. They'll usually let parents get away with an arrangement that says something like, hey, look, you know, the parents are going to have 50 50 or 60 40. Parents are just going to, um, you know, provide for the child's needs during their time sharing, and boom, no child support's going to change hands. You know, a lot of these old country judges will just sign off on that and they don't care. They don't care. But you go to, again, your more urban areas, you know, your big cities, urban areas, more progressive. You know, they're more up on what's going on with the statutes. Um, they're more involved in uh, the, the legislation and everything else. Those judges are usually a little younger. Um, those are the ones that usually are going to have your biggest problem with allowing parents to waive child support. Now, there's another area, another time where I see it happening where parents can waive child support, and that is if they can stay out of the courts altogether, right? So if you are amicable enough with your ex, um, whether it's the mom or the dad, it, to where you guys can work out a custody arrangement and child support um, outside of the courts, right? Um, that is the only other situation where you guys can effectively waive child support um, but there's a couple things to watch out for, okay? So the first thing is, well, a few things. The first thing is you have to be tremendously amicable with your ex in order for this to happen, okay? Tremendously amicable. And, and that's hard because you guys are no longer in a relationship. You've broken up. Maybe she's got a new man or you've got a new girl or, or, or vice versa, right? Depending on if, 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 uh, if, if I'm talking to mom or I'm talking to dad right now. And so... These are things that you got to watch out for because, you know, at least the second, the second concern and that is if things fall apart and you need to enforce the arrangement you have, you can't go to court and enforce a verbal arrangement that was made outside of the courts without a court case that was, you know, without a court order, right? So you would have to go to the courts and file a petition to establish parental rights and, and all that stuff. And you, if you end up having to enforce this arrangement, you're going to have to you know, go through the courts and, and, and deal with the child support system anyway. Um, so again, going back to that first point, being super amicable with the other side is going to be tremendously important in that situation. Okay, last concern is going to be if, let's say you guys stay out of the courts, you're super amicable, you never have to enforce it, um, you know, things are good. But let's say at some point down the road, you know, you guys have agreed to maybe this verbal 50-50 custody and you've agreed that we're not going to go after each other for child support. If the other parent decides later down the road 
that they do want to go after child support, right? They want to say, you know what, damn that, vi- uh, that verbal arrangement that we made, I'm going for child support, you pissed me off or something happened, right? They can go in and they can file a petition with the court and say, hey, look, I haven't gotten any child support for the last two years. And most places, you, they can get two years of back child support for, before the date that they file their petition. So even though you had a verbal arrangement, like you can go to court and you say, judge, we had a verbal arrangement. Here's a text message where she said I didn't need to pay child support or, or, or he, you know, he said I didn't need to pay child support. The courts generally aren't going to honor that. They're going to make you all go through and calculate child support. All right, guys, listen, um, if you need to learn more about child support and learn more about the law, um, you know, like hearing about celebrity uh, family law issues and interesting uh, topics and uh, news stories in the law, subscribe to this channel. Hit that thumbs up icon. It really helps us out in the YouTube algorithm. Um, I appreciate you hanging through here to the end. Nothing here constitutes legal advice. Always talk to your own lawyer in your jurisdiction about your particular set of facts before you make any decisions in your case. Um, this is not an invitation to establish an attorney-client relationship. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one.